Good evening and welcome to The Overtime. I'm Kaylee Emery. And I'm Alex Lucero. Thanks for joining us. We have a lot planned for today as we will grade high school baseball and softball teams. Talk about this upcoming season for NAU football. We will also talk about some professional sports here in Arizona along with an interview with an NAU tennis player and we'll keep you updated on all the weekend sports events. And so it's getting close to the end of the semester. Are you excited about all the last minute games? Yeah, you know, there's only two weeks left in the season for most baseball and softball games in high school before playoffs, so those will be good. It should. Well, I guess we'll jump right into the first question. What high school baseball team would you grade the highest, Alex? Well, all three of these teams played extremely well this season, but the highest grade has to go to Flagstaff with a B plus only because of their recent struggles. They have hit a tough stretch of games recently, but still sit at a very impressive record. After their game against Dysart that went on earlier today, the Eagles have a great ending to their season. They get to make up the difference in those sectional games because they play the final four games at home, of which three of those games are section games, and their record at home, a staggering 8-1 record. This team can get it done at home and can really close the season out on a strong finish before playoffs. I agree. Flagstaff has done really good this season along with the NPA Spartans, but I think the highest grade for me will go to the Coconino Panthers. The Panthers have come across some tougher teams this year like Bradshaw Mountain who are 15 and 5 and I think the way they have been showing up on the mound has been keeping all the fans on their feet. The Panthers are 15 and 6 and have had a lot of help from some of their key players. Boys like Brant Chapin, Jordan Lopez, Diego Johnson and Fritz Plikas. This team is stacked and with a, this good of a record, I think that they can give or I will give them an A. Yeah, and, and a little under two weeks from now is when Coconino and Flagstaff meet up. And that is going to be a very good game that I think everybody should go see. I, I'm really looking forward to it. All right, second question for tonight. What high school softball team would you give the highest grade? Well, just like the baseball teams, the softball teams have to be following and doing some good work on the field. I think that the NPA Lady Spartans have been doing exceptionally well this season. Now, I will say that they have faced some pretty easy teams that have led to mercy rule, like the 22-0 win against Ash Fork and the 18-1 win against Mayer. But you have to remember that they're in a different division than Flagstaff and Coconino. The Spartans are 8-3 and, and have a great 7-1 and one section record towards the end of this season, and they have some star players as well with only four games remaining of their season I think that you know they'll be able to pull it off so I'm going to give them a B plus only because the teams that they've been facing have been way too easy yeah they've had some extremely high offensive firepower on that team but that's a good choice can't go wrong with the MPA Spartans but I'm gonna go with a team just as impressive the Coconino Panthers April is their month as they have gone six in one this month including winning three in a row yes they have a 10 and 13 overall record but they are perfect in section play 5 and 0 which is great to do to get into the section tournament they have outscored their opponents 50 to 23 in section games doubling their run scored to runs against this team is ready for a playoff run and in my opinion with the recent success, they're going to get a big A++. Wow, A++. <laughs> well, I mean, i got to say that all the softball and baseball teams have been doing really good this season, and that's really good to see. Yeah, and there's going to be some great games to follow up with the baseball teams as well. Definitely. And moving to the third question, what are your NAU football season predictions looking like, Alex? Well, let's just say it's not as promising as last year. Not just because they lost Zach Bowman, but they lose eight starters on that defense that led the entire FCS with eight defensive touchdowns, and they led the Big Sky Conference in first downs per game, as well as third down conversion rates. Also, again, we don't really know the quarterback situation, but with receiver Ify Umoto hopefully returning from injury, it will add another dimension to that passing attack. For now, I'm not going to be all that optimistic, and I have the Lumberjacks finishing between fourth and sixth place in the Big Sky. I actually I'm going to have to agree with you. I think they're going to probably fall in that same category. And this year is definitely going to be different than last with Zach Bowman going into the NFL draft and with these 28 new pickups. This season is not going to look like it did last year. I can't see the Lumberjacks making it to the playoffs like they did last season. And that's just because the team is going to have to transition and work with these new players. Everyone plays different and we're kind of starting over with this new season. But I think Coach Sowers and the rest of the Lumberjack coaching staff will prepare these men for the regular season. We have the spring football game next Saturday. So I think that that's when all these players have a chance to kind of shine and show off what they can do. So you're going to go with the, around the four to six range uh, place wise? Yeah, I think so. I mean, unfortunately, I don't think they'll do as good as last year only because they lost nine key players, uh, but I think they'll 
still do good. Yeah, definitely. And moving on to the fourth question, Kaylee, this is your sport. What would you grade the Coyotes? Oh gosh, Alex. Well, I was excited at the beginning <laughs> of the season because the Coyotes were looking good, but towards the end, they let their season slip away. The Coyotes started out strong, and then it was like Mike Smith got injured, and unfortunately, goaltending wasn't as strong. And then their defense just wasn't really showing up. They had their chance to get to the wild card spot, but they let it go once April started, losing to the Kings, Panthers, Sharks. Ultimately, they let go of their chances for the playoffs as Dallas and Minnesota took the wild card. The Coyotes ended ninth in the Western Conference and fourth in the Pacific Division, ending 37, 30, and 15. But we still have to give the Yotes credit for their effort this year. Yeah, I mean, they still had a good season nonetheless, and it was tough for the Coyotes and pretty much tough on all teams in Arizona with the Suns not making playoffs. But I still like the Coyotes moving forward. Yes, they let their play playoff chances slip away and it's always one game to do that and I think it was the Minnesota Wild game when they blew the lead late in the third period from there it was all downhill but the Coyotes should be returning key pieces and Mike Smith should fully recover from his injury for now they get to sit back and train until next season but my grade for this team I'm going to give them around a B minus range because they they just let it slip in the month of April yeah I, it's sad but unfortunately you know what it happens. There's always next so, season. Yeah, there's always next season. Well, 30 seconds for this last one. What do you think about the Phoenix Mercury's draft picks? Alex, you're the basketball guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll talk a little bit about their first pick that they chose, and that's Oklahoma State guard Tiffany Bias at number 17 in the draft. Bias led the team in scoring at 13.9 points per game, first in assists at 5.2, and second in steals at just over two steals per game. Some experts had her as the best true point guard in the, in the draft, and with the Mercury's high-powered offense, fast pace offense she'll fit right in and maybe help lead that team to a title well that would be really exciting to see and you know what they got lucky last year as they picked up Brittany Griner and I think this year they picked up some pretty good players also I don't know how many people follow the Mercury but I think that they will be looking hot on the paint this upcoming season I'm really hoping that they can bring home another title and bring something back to the state of Arizona <laughs> that would be good especially for Phoenix the way that the Diamondbacks are looking right now and it, just everything it would be nice to see them do good yeah we'll be looking forward to them. <laughs> well, don't go anywhere. Jacob Larson sat down with NAU women's tennis player Haley Rochin to talk about all the success she and the Lumberjacks have had this season. screen at night. Plus, I got E911 to pinpoint our house and unlimited long distance to flatten our bill. Suddenly, the phone company seems cheesy because Suddenlink just reinvented home phone and made it look easy. At Northern Arizona University, we're reaching for the stars and I'm True Blue NAU. We're restoring our forest. And I'm True Blue NAU. It's our home away from home. And we're True Blue NAU. I'm learning to make the world a safer place. And I'm True Blue NAU. We're building the 21st Century University. And I am True Blue NAU. Shop with pride. Wear your Northern Arizona University gear on Fridays. Be True Blue NAU. Welcome back everyone. The NEU women's tennis team has been looking good on the court so far. So good that they made it into the Big Sky playoffs as the number two seed. Sports reporter Jacob Larson sat down with Haley Roshan, one of the women who has a lot of success here at NEU to talk about this season. I'm here with Haley Roshan, who was just named the Big Sky Player of the Week for tennis. Now, um, tell me, you just you guys just clinched the playoffs. Talk about the success of your team so far this season. Yeah, we've we've come so far. You know, the beginning of the season we started a little bit rough, and now we're peaking, and this is a great time to peak. We have so much confidence going into the playoffs, and we actually have a great chance at winning it this year. And we're super super excited, and have so much confidence from these past wins. That's great. Um, so, what were your expectations coming into the season, both your personal ones and the team as a whole? Yeah, so my personal expectations, I knew college tennis was going to be hard coming from junior tennis in Tucson, Arizona, but I didn't know it was going to be this difficult, and it's great though because I have so much support. My sister's on the team, she's a senior, and um, she told me, don't expect anything, just come in, work hard, uh, listen to the coaches and respect the staff, and I definitely am now, and I love it so much, and so my expectations didn't really have any coming in other than to work hard, and it's paying off, and our team expectations, we um, have always done good in the conference, so 
we wanted to take the title this year, and beating SAC definitely helped that. Yeah, talk about that. You just beat Sacramento yes. State for the first time in, what, 13 years? Mm -hmm. So that was a big deal. Huge win. Yeah, we're, we're so excited. Our whole team is so pumped about beating SAC. Um, they are a fantastic tennis program, and when we beat them, we were just so pumped, and it just it gives us great confidence in going into uh, the, the playoffs. So talk about the weekend before that when you clinched the playoffs, beating Weber State and Idaho State. What was that like? Yeah, those were great wins too. You know, it just leads up to playing SAC. Um, when we clinched the spot, we were so excited and pumped and ready to beat SAC. And um, it's just it's a great moment to pull through with your team and make it to the playoffs. That's, a, that's awesome. Um, so talk about this upcoming match that you have next. Uh, you're going to play Southern Utah the importance of that match going into the playoffs and getting ready for the playoffs. Yeah, so um, Southern Utah is a great team and coming, but I don't think they're going to handle us right now with our huge sack win. Um, we're so confident. Our, our, we're pe like I said, we're peaking. My coach is so proud of us and this will be a great win going into the playoffs and continue the winning record. That's great. So um, talk about the honor of being named the Big Sky Player of the Week and what that was like for you personally. Yeah, so um, being yeah, being honored the POW, that's what my team calls me, the POW, it was great, I loved it. Um, player of the Week, it just, it means a lot to me and to my teammates. You just, you can't become Player of the Week without the support of your teammates and coaches. And without the support of them, I definitely wouldn't be the Player of the Week. I just cannot imagine the support they've, they've brought me, and I just, uh, it, was, it was a great honor. Uh, you mentioned your team and their support. Talk about the unity that this team has. Yeah, we've, we've gotten so close as the uh, season's you know, wrapped up, and it's almost over, but we've enjoyed each other's company, and a lot of the girls are foreign on our team. We have a Swedish uh, player, and a German player, and an a English player, and it's great, because though different nationalities, we all came together, and now we're sisters on the team, we're bonding, and we're gonna bring home the title. Sounds like you guys are really close, yes. and that's a, that's a really good thing yes. to have. Especially having my sister on the team. That's also <laughs> fun, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna send it back to you guys at the desk. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob, and a big thanks to Haley for coming into the studio to talk about all the success both her and the women on this team have had. Stick around. Brooke Cowell will give us the schedule for this busy sports weekend here in Flagstaff. Stick around. Hi, I'm Terry Markson. As seasons change, so does the inventory at Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac. But before we make room for the 2014 Cadillac, we've still got a huge selection of brand new 2013s to choose from. Models like the powerful CTS, the ATS voted 2013 Car of the Year, the popular SRX Crossover, and Cadillac's Crown Jewel, the Escalade. You can always count on our same relaxed, no pressure environment. Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac, real hometown value. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Then no lo puedo hacer. DMC, life in your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb, just keeping it real. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. It's a busy weekend for Northern Arizona schools, but not necessarily for us here in Flagstaff. So I'm going to start with one of the only teams that will be in town this weekend. The NPA baseball boys will host Phoenix Christian this Saturday. These two have yet to face off this season, so it should be a pretty good game. First pitch on Saturday is at 12 noon. Keeping it on the field, but moving up to the college level, the NAU baseball team is competing in their final series this weekend when they face Cal State Fullerton. The Jacks play at 10 and 1 on Saturday and 10 o'clock on Sunday. Moving things over to the golf field, the NAU golf team competes in the Big Sky Championship this Sunday through Tuesday. The tournament is being held in Chandler, Arizona. Switching over to track and field, the NAU track and field team will be in sunny California this weekend for the Beach Invitational. They'll compete all day Saturday in Norwalk, California. Moving over to the court, the NAU men's tennis team plays this Saturday as well, and the NAU women's team plays this Saturday at Southern Utah as well, and they start at 10 and 2. I'm going to send it back to you guys at the desk. Well, thanks, Brooke, for that update, and it should be a busy weekend here in Flagstaff. Thanks for joining us.